Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Around 330 positions are to be axed from the Queensland Police Service to cover the $27 million gap in the government's police budget. The Minister for Police announced the decision in Parliament yesterday. The projected job losses come about because of a bigger than expected pay rise for police granted by the Industrial Commission. The Minister of Police says that has left a funding gap which will have to be funded by the police service's operating budget. The police service will fund a share of the increase of around $27 million a year from its $1.893 billion operating budget. Around 250 civilian positions have been cut, along with a further 80 planned positions withdrawn. It is a decision the Queensland Police Union says has come from a deceitful government. This is what I'm expecting of this current government. They say one thing in one day and then another thing the next day. They're just completely deceitful and out of touch. The Queensland Police Union say the administrative position cut will mean that some frontline police officers will be forced to desk jobs and maintenance work to meet the department's increased wage bill. Cutting 330 administrative jobs from the police service will directly impact upon service delivery of policing functions around the state of Queensland. The police commissioner says the department's headquarters will be hit hardest with cuts up to 7% of its civilian staff numbers. What we're doing is taking by far the biggest hit here in headquarters. Uh, Percentage-wise, it equates to about a 7% reduction in our civilian staff numbers. The shadow minister for police says the situation is because of poor budget management by the government. Well, there's no doubt that if the Labor government could manage their budget properly, we wouldn't be facing the situation that we currently are. Mr Lanebrook claims the cuts will affect things such as triple zero emergency calls. It's going to affect our whole police service. Ten and a half thousand police are now going to have to fill, uh, fill in with jobs that they were currently uh, not having to do and things like people waiting for triple O calls to be answered is going to become commonplace. The job cuts are expected to be in the form of voluntary redundancies and the process is likely to take around five months. Nicholas Chin, QT News. Three drugs charges has been filed against the 14-year-old Australian boy who was arrested earlier this month in Bali for alleged cannabis possession. The boy faces three charges, the most serious of which carries a six-year jail term. The Australian schoolboy has been spending the last few days in an Indonesian detention centre with his family. His lawyer says he's feeling traumatised after being hounded by media packs since his arrest. The three drug charges he now faces range from minor, which would see him released for rehabilitation, to very serious, where he could be forced to serve a six-year jail term in Indonesia's infamous Karabukan prison. Yesterday, the boy's lawyer, Mohamed Rafan, said he hoped they can begin the trial early next week. We hope for the next week uh, the court hearing will be uh, starting because uh, I got the confirmation from uh, the prosecutor. It has since been announced he will face court on Tuesday, with the trial expected to last at least two weeks. Natalie Ross, QT News. The Australian schoolboy has been spending the last few days in an Indonesian detention centre with his family. His lawyer says he's feeling traumatised after being hounded by media packs since his arrest. The three drug charges he now faces range from minor, which would see him released for rehabilitation, to very serious, where he could be forced to serve a six-year jail term in Indonesia's infamous Karabukan prison. Yesterday, the boy's lawyer, Mohamed Rafan, said he hoped they can begin the trial early next week. We hope for the next week uh, the court hearing will be uh, starting because uh, I got the confirmation from uh, the prosecutor. It has since been announced he will face court on Tuesday, with the trial expected to last at least two weeks. Natalie Ross, QT News. A technical glitch caused major disruption today at the Australian Securities Exchange. Trading was halted just after the opening and did not resume for four hours. On a normal day, the exchange trades about a billion dollars an hour, so the potential losses were huge. However, the ASX says all of the 6,700 trades that were made this morning before the technical glitch are still valid. As soon as trading did resume, Australian shares immediately jumped 2%. The ASX is investigating the cause of the glitch, but analysts say the impact has been minimal.
A new study has shown that mothers in higher income areas are more active than those in lower socioeconomic areas. The Brisbane mums were tracked by a check-in system while using social media networks. The QUT study, believed to be the first of its kind in Australia, used social media networks such as Facebook, Twitter and Foursquare along with Google Earth to conduct its research. The health habits of 100 mothers from two differing suburbs Barden in the leafy west and Inala in the southwest were tracked over a week. We uh, first set out to do our study to find out why there are differences in physical activity levels between higher and lower socioeconomic suburbs. The study found mums in higher income areas lead more active lifestyles. With the chances that you get around here, you're going to be a lot more active and a lot more things to do. And a lot of um, mums that I know who live in the um, those sorts of areas don't necessarily have to work and so therefore they have more time to be able to devote to getting out. And we have the money. I think money is a huge indicator. Mothers from Baden manage to walk, cycle and use public transport twice as often as those in Anala. Google Maps show both suburbs have similar facilities but mothers in Anala disagree. It's very poor. There's nothing really here for the young kids to do in the area. There's, yeah, so I think they should step up a lot there. There's no, there used to be pools and skating rinks and whatnot down the road, they're derelict buildings now. The nicer areas will have nicer parks and, and better facilities for families and children. It's hoped the results from this survey will help town planners, councils and health professionals to work on improving these statistics. Increasing the maintenance of local parks and improving the playground areas for children, whether it's having uh, more security around the place or whether it's just um, investing in funding to go and maintain and improve and clean up local areas. Alicia Bolson, QUT News. The United Nations says easing poverty and conserving the environment will be the main challenges posed by the world's burgeoning population. The concerns were voiced after the announcement that Earth's population will hit 7 billion in the next couple of days. The UN says the increasing population is a challenge, an opportunity and a call to action. Today's milestone, that is the milestone of this report and the 7 billion that we anticipate, is a wake-up call. Now, it is a reminder that we must act now. A Brisbane demographer says it's important to note the population growth rate has actually fallen in recent times. And if we manage our consumption levels and if we have the technology, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to feed um, the extra two billion we're going to have in population by 2050. The Vatican told QUT News that the current population is sustainable. It quoted Mother Teresa who once said, how can there be too many children? That is like saying there are too many flowers. But the Vatican does concede that there are problems that the international community has to address, such as providing food and water to the places most in need, providing infrastructure such as roads, wells, drainage and sanitation, and helping people to stay healthy and earn a living. But a sustainability group says competing for non-renewable resources is a major problem, and distributing contraception and educating women in developing nations is vital. It is actually a moral imperative to reduce our population because what we are doing is having births that are basically going to result in people dying. The UN report says that if the current population growth continues, there could be more than 9 billion people on the planet by 2050. Ellie Bradfield, QUT News. People around Australia are preparing to mark the annual Day for Daniel marking eight years since Daniel Morecambe was abducted and murdered. An estimated one million people are planning to take part in a number of activities to raise funds for the Daniel Morecambe Foundation. The Morecambe family says it's not just a day to remember their son, but a day of action to promote awareness of the need for child protection and safety. Brisbane locals can be involved by wearing red tomorrow or going on the community walk for Daniel at Annalee. The day is in its sixth year and is recognised as the largest event of its type in Australia. And now to sports. Australian tennis player Samantha Stoza has gone from victory to defeat in just one day. Sam Stoza has been brought back to earth with a loss to Victoria Azarenka at the WTA Championships in Turkey. The world number seven, who recently beat her nemesis Maria Sharapova, suffered a 6-2, 6-2 loss to the Belarusian. 
Stosa now has to defeat China's Li Na in her final round-robin match on Saturday to reach the semi-finals. The Queensland Bulls have defeated the Tasmanian Tigers in the Sheffield Shield game at the Gabba today. The Bulls made it look easy, winning by an innings and 28 runs. Excitement is starting to spread across the nation as we head towards the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. This weekend, all eyes are on three-year-old Manu Inui for Saturday's Victoria Derby. He's drawn the middle barrier, which experts say will give the favourite every chance in the 2500 metre event. But jockey Craig Williams may lose his chance at a historic triple crown this racing season. Williams was suspended from racing for 10 days after careless riding at Bendigo yesterday, ruling him out of Tuesday's Melbourne Cup. He was tipped to become the first jockey to win the Caulfield Cup, the Cox Plate and the Melbourne Cup in the same spring. Williams is appealing the severity of the penalty at Flemington tomorrow morning. And in soccer, the Brisbane Roar are confident they'll put up a good fight against Adelaide United tomorrow. The Roar's 31-game unbeaten streak is not only intimidating Adelaide... It could have been a bit of a burden, but we've actually used it as a bit of a, you know, uh, a motivation for us to keep it going, you know, and uh, we all know we're going to lose at some point, and we all know that's when that happens, uh, we're going to come back here and train again like we always have. Brisbane and Adelaide will play at Suncorp Stadium tomorrow night. Kimberly McCosker, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather from our special time-lapse sky cam. We can see it was another cloudy day in Brisbane, but there was no rain associated with the cloud and patches of blue sky appeared on and off throughout the day. Around the nation tomorrow, it will be mostly fine, but Melbourne can expect a windy day and showers are predicted in Adelaide and Hobart. Conditions for Brisbane over the next three days are going to be fine. Temperatures will reach 27 degrees on Saturday, just in time for the weekend. And looking further ahead, the sunny conditions will continue through to Tuesday next week, but we can expect some showers on Wednesday. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for you now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.